now a special Channel 10 holiday program, The Year in Schwal's World. Hi and welcome to the Schwal's World Year in Review, a collection of uh, some of our favorite segments of 1995. During the next little while, we'll be getting reacquainted with some of the folks who we've met along the way. Folks who have either intentionally or unintentionally provided us with a few chuckles. It, it is the people who have made the Schwal's World segments what they are, whatever that is. But let's get started. Regular viewers know that food has played an important role in many of our segments. That could explain why I'm ending the year 30 pounds overweight, but uh, here are a few delicious examples. <laughs> They start dancing at a young age here. Music and dance help preserve a rich heritage. They also help you keep in shape. And that comes in handy around here because there's this natural tendency to overeat the minute you walk in. So much to eat, yet so little time. Sometimes it takes a team effort. Is the fire marshal know about this? Yeah, the fire marshal's been informed. You probably paid him off with some baklava, too. Oh, shh, okay. The desserts here are incredible, like this baklava sundae. A little ice cream, a little baklava, a little syrup, a little whipped cream, and a little fruit for healthy eating. And presto. Any idea how many calories in this thing? We don't want to talk about calories. <laughs> Just enjoy the taste. Thank you. Oh, sure, that's easy for her to say. But while I and others are busy gaining weight, guess what some of the workers here eat? Go figure. Here in Rockford, they're picking up a storm. In row after row, strawberry lovers are filling their containers with red, ripe berries. And all over East Tennessee, pickers and farmers alike say they're thrilled. Ken, we've had the most berries I think we've ever had per acre. Really? And they've been good. Young and old, they've come to pick using several tried and true techniques. You've got your benders, your stoopers, your sitters, and your crawlers. They're the ones with the knee pads. Have you been a crawler long? Uh, no, just, just since I've been pregnant. It's oh. much easier. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <coughs> well. Theoretically, you're supposed to put the berries in your pail, not in your mouth. But all over the place, there's evidence of flagrant violations. You know, you got strawberry on your uh, chin there. Oh, is it off? It's off. <laughs> you're in the clear. They'll never catch you now. <laughs> oh, mercy me. This youngster's getting his first exposure to strawberries and doesn't quite know what to think. What is that? Mm. Squeeze it. Rub it all over your shirt. <laughs> Back break your job. Jessie Boroff has been picking all her life. For 54 years, she's had help from her husband, Esky, but... Something happened to him. I ain't gonna get married no more. I don't want none of these men no more. Who's gonna help you pick strawberries? Huh? I'll just do that. <laughs> if you go up Clinch Mountain just about as far as you can, you'll see it. Now, it's no mistake. For 60 years, the specialty of the house here has been vinegar pie. And here's a woman from Michigan eating her first piece. We need a drum roll. <laughs> well? It's good. Her companions always stop on their annual trip south. Don't they have any in Michigan? No. Well, I'd move down here if I were you. <laughs> I've thought about it. Now, when you first heard about vinegar pie, what was your first reaction? I thought, yuck. <laughs> Vinegar pie is an old-timey local treat. Back when no one could afford lemons for lemon pie, they searched for a good tart substitute. Go ahead. That's what makes it, huh? Yeah, that's what makes it. A lot of tourists come by here. One family from California stopped today to get some to go and ended up eating it in their van in the parking lot. And don't try to steal her pie. <laughs> <laughs> Even the owners say they're surprised at how much people love the stuff. They packed it in ice. They were going to the airport and flying home with my pie. <laughs> it's really good. You ought to try some. First, though, let's see how another diner likes it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it really doesn't taste like vinegar. No, it doesn't. No. no. It tastes like chicken. 
<laughs> As a matter of fact, they say even if you don't like the first bite, the second one will just bowl you over. <laughs> You could literally eat your way from one end of the convention center to the other. A lot of people did. Area cooks and chefs trying out the food for another season. You like seafood? What's this? It's an imitation scallop. Uh, what's this? It's an imitation crab. Are you real? I'm real. <laughs> How about a touch of Mardi Gras? That's seafood gumbo. Got shrimp, crab meat, and oysters in it. We got uh, Mardi Gras cakes. We make them in New Orleans. This is a traditional cake with the has a little naked baby in there. <laughs> Please. Yes, sir. Well, guess who makes mustard? What's in it? We've got Jack Daniels uh, whiskey and uh, in the There's Jack Daniels whiskey in there. Uh, just a just a hint. Would you expect any more than a hint of whiskey from a salesman named Sober? Speaking of Tennessee traditions... Good old country corn dogs. Yes, sir. Yes. All you need to do is heat them in the oven. You ain't from around here, are you? No, I'm not. I'm from Ma Scotland. Scotland? Uh -huh, I am. And you're selling corn dogs? Yes, I am. This is what I was chosen for this spot today. If I come later, I'd Have you ever had a corn dog, Margaret? No, I haven't. Well, would you like to? Here, try one. <laughs> no. Go ahead and try a corn dog. They don't have these in Scotland, I guess. Not usually how we eat them, but uh, how is it? Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's quite tasty. Actually, you should have one yourself. No, I've had them before. <laughs> Finally, the latest in work-saving devices, no-shell eggs. We have about 10 million chickens that we have that are breaking, making farm fresh eggs for us. Yeah. And that yeah. is not an easy job to do. You ever try laying an egg? It's very difficult, let me tell you. So thank God we have chickens to do it. Animals have managed to play a major role in Schwal's World segments this year. Who could forget the ice cream-eating pigs that we found? out at the Cruz Dairy Farm in East Knox County. Then there was that other pig, the one in Townsend who ran with the horses. Every day at the Davy Crockett Riding Stables, horses carry tourists through one of the most beautiful areas of Townsend. Along the trails they go, the people, the horses, and Porky. Yes, I know, Porky's a pig. But for the past couple of years, he's been tagging along with the horses. No one knows exactly why. But the employees here have a theory. So why does the pig, uh, why does the pig follow the horses? I guess he gets bored. This dog used to go with the horses. There seems to have been a role reversal, and the dog now acts like a pig. Porky will stop occasionally and grab a quick bite. The horses just go on their way. Eventually, Porky catches up. People who work here have grown mighty fond of Porky. Well, he's quite a pig, isn't he? Yeah, he's a prince among pigs, I'd say. <laughs> Who's smarter, horses or pigs? Oh, horses are dumb. They have a very small brain. A pig is much smarter than a horse. You can tell that because Porky is running around free and the horses all have people on their backs. Hey, he didn't seem to mind our cameras at all. No, Porky, he's a real ham. After a long ride, though, Porky gets the royal treatment. <laughs> Everybody loves Porky, and Porky knows it and takes advantage of it. She's in hog heaven. 1,700 dogs is a lot of dogs to show. Must be why everyone around here seems to be in a hurry. These are some of the best in the nation, and they don't come cheap. Not at all. Five grand minimum. <laughs> five, five grand? Five, five grand. <laughs> minimum, I said. Does he uh, do tricks? Or? No, they don't do anything. For 5000 he doesn't just, do tricks? They just run around the ring. <laughs> the competition does produce some unlikely combinations of man and beast. So who are you picking in the 96 election? <laughs> <laughs> I like the hat. It's kind of the Mother Teresa look, huh? Uh, right. <laughs> right. She certainly isn't the Mother Teresa at home, well, though. <laughs> well, no dog is perfect. That's why this is the busiest person at the show. To the uneducated, the dogs represent varying degrees of cuteness, though each owner seems to have their own idea of cute, even the bulldogs. They're so ugly, they're cute. <laughs> and all the pushing and squeezing you can do won't help the bulldog. The looks may not be everything, but around here, they do mean a lot. That's why most of these dogs are pruned and pampered making sure that everything that should lay down lays down and everything that should stand up stands up. By the time the doggy beauticians get through, the canines have that movie star look. Remember Suzanne Summers? Now look closely at this one. 
Kind of favors Willie Nelson, doesn't it? No, that's the back. Oh, sorry. Well, I still say it looks like Willie Nelson. Those of you who have recently moved to East Tennessee from the north have already noticed that some words are pronounced differently here. It'll take some getting used to, but it's really not all that complicated. And during the past year, we have tried as a public service to shed a little light on the subject. One occasion was the day Lamar Alexander announced that he was running for president. And he did it in his hometown of Maryville, or Merville, or, well, just watch. They are from Washington. I am from Maryville. From where? From Maryville. For a minute there, it sounded like he said Maryville. Well, probably just a slip of the tongue. Everybody knows his hometown is... Merville, Tennessee. Merville, Tennessee. He's older. He's learned how to slur it better. Merville, Tennessee. <laughs> Knowing how the locals spell it helps, but even that is subject to change. Well, it's, it's really M-U-R-V-U-L, Merville. But if you're a little more sophisticated, it's M E R V U L, Merville. So, uh, you it's know. A subtle difference. Yeah, you know, you try to show a little class with it. <laughs> Very little. <laughs> but no one is really sure. Hi. Hi. Where are you from? I'm from Maryville. Where? Maryville. Maryville. <laughs> Merville. What city is this? Mar Maryville. That, you're speaking to yeah. an old Yankee <laughs> from Pittsburgh. It's Merville. What? Merville, Tennessee. Mer Merville, Merville, Tennessee. It's hard to say. No, it's hard to say for you outsiders. <laughs> <laughs> how do you pronounce it? Uh, both ways. When you're on TV, how do you pronounce it? I'll say Maryville. Well, how about it when you're home? Nope. I'd be Maryville. All right. <laughs> so why all the confusion? I'm not sure. Maybe it's just a, a Merville thing. Well, let's double check with the guy who hopes to put the city on the map. <laughs> and once again, how do you pronounce this town? Maribel's what I say. I was trying to explain that to the TV guy from New York City, he, but at least he asked. Well, that was nice of him. <laughs> Kenchwall, Action 10 News, Blunt County. Well, here it comes, Burley Tobacco. For generations, the economic lifeblood of Claiborne County. Most of these farmers have been raising tobacco all their lives, which in some cases is a long time. How old are you? 85. 85. Uh, 85 and a half, well over a half. <laughs> and there's a respect for tobacco here, almost a friendship. Everybody's supposed to have a chew. <laughs> <laughs> Got some on your beard there, let me. <laughs> Stocking the tobacco warehouse is a lot of work and requires a lot of people. Serena Campbell is on her first day operating a forklift. Has found it's a little dangerous. I broke a nail this morning. You broke a nail? Yeah. Tragedy. Right. Let's see it. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. Do you get workman's comp for that? No. No. <laughs> but Serena's an exception. So you're the other forklift driver, huh? Yep. How are your fingernails holding up? Real good. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. There is some confusion, though, over how to pronounce the name of this crop. Some pronounce it tobacco, while others say backer. Now, this explanation should clear things up. Most of us call it backer, but it's pronounced tobacco. It's the same like, uh, way like our taters, we call them down here, but they are potatoes. Some say potatoes and some say potato. Yes, sir, they do. Some say tobacco and some say... I'm getting confused. Oh, let's call the whole thing off. Around here, it's pronounced... Money. <laughs> That's how you say it. Yeah, money. Now, you wouldn't expect a lot of humorous material out of the U.S. Postal Service, but surprisingly, the gang down at the post office made several appearances on Schwal's World this year, and this was one of the best. Don't even bother asking this guy how his day is going. He's obviously doing all right. Just a typical day at the post office. Actually, these are contestants in the Marilyn Monroe Lookalike Contest, being held to publicize today's release of the newest 32-cent stamp, the Marilyn Monroe stamp. A panel of judges checked out the contestants with a critical eye as they walked across the lobby. Actually, there were critical eyes all over the place. I just come in for a couple of stamps and... I see a bunch of blondes. I can get used to that. It's your lucky day. It is. I like that. But there were some more critical than others. What do you think of all that? I don't know. What is it all about? They look like Marilyn Monroe, don't they? No, I don't see anybody who looks like Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> so why do they like Marilyn so much? Because she's beautiful. She was sexy. Wild and crazy. Now, Marilyn wasn't known for her great acting ability or her singing. Her most memorable song? 
Happy birthday, Mr. President. This lookalike is actually a postal employee. You work here? Yes, sir. What do the boys in the back room say? Different things. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you can tell us on television? No. Oh. Glenda Widener was the winner of the lookalike contest, but the big winner, that guy in line. He still can't believe his luck. My wife sent me to the, to the post office. Not very bright. She'll never do that again, will she? Not a chance. Not when she sees this. Many of our regular Schwalz World viewers are loyal fans of the University of Tennessee Volunteers. And it is with them in mind that we present our next two offerings. They're expecting a big year here at Tennessee Traditions, the souvenir store at Stokely Athletic Center. Within the confines of these walls, you'll find everything the die-hard Tennessee fan needs to get through the season. Only one requirement for the well-dressed fan, every piece of clothing has to have the Tennessee name or logo. For more dressy occasions, the tie department offers a wide selection, all of them subtle and tasteful. But there's more to style than looks. Here's the new Tennessee Vol Cologne for men. I wouldn't uh, class it with uh, obsession, but it smells very good for a cologne, for a men's cologne. Doesn't make you smell like a football player after the game or anything? No. No, <laughs> no not nice and sweaty, no. <laughs> if the game gets boring, you can drag out the new Vol Checker game. And if you're looking for stylish headwear, there's no shortage of styles here. No! Here's a volunteer musical coaster, a place to put your coffee cup, your tea cup, shot glass. Actually, it seems that half the things in the store play Rocky Top. Another carload of Tennessee fans is entering enemy territory. It's the traditional trek up I-75, flags flying high. The ball cheering section is racing to the rescue, but don't race too fast. The state of Kentucky has just kicked off a brand new long-term safety program. They're cracking down. If you're gonna be coming through Kentucky, uh, be aware that we're gonna have more people out there working overtime. Uh, looking for traffic violations. The campaign began just this week, in time for the big orange pilgrimage. Coincidence? Some ball fans think not. Oh, I think it's because we beat them 100 to nothing the last two years. <laughs> that's got something to do with it, maybe. I think that's the whole thing. <laughs> I think they're gonna get some Tennessee money. <laughs> <laughs> I say they're wanting to get back at us for coming up and uh, kicking. Actually, Kentucky says the kickoff date is unrelated to the game. Quite honestly, we wanted to kick it off just before the holidays. They don't like Tennessee. They don't like the color orange. Oh, we, we love Tennessee up here in Kentucky. So much so, in fact, that they've installed new equipment on their squad cars. Big orange detectors. Extra sensitive. <laughs> Our final two stories are totally unrelated, except for the fact that they feature some real neat people. The topics, the Super Bowl, and Knoxville's coffee craze of 1995. Used to be places that served cappuccino all looked and sounded about the same. Jazz music, intellectual books, several studious types in attendance, but oh, how things are changing, and with the push of a button. Weigel's, a local chain of markets, seems to have hit upon something. Instant cappuccino. And now people are sitting around sipping cappuccino who have never darkened the door of one of those fancy places. I don't even like coffee. And I'm in here every morning getting one of these and every night getting one of these at 11 o'clock. I drink it at noon, breakfast, and supper. <laughs> I love it. Are you hooked? I'm hooked. <laughs> Here comes Brenda Johnson. She's known at this Weigel's as the Cappuccino Queen. 
She's in here several times a day. This particular machine was down for about a week, and uh, I nearly drove that like crazy, yeah. You had with withdrawals? Yeah, very much so. Appropriately, one of the most popular commercials in town these days is for Weigel's Cappuccino. You know, it's obvious everyone in Knoxville is trying Weigel's new cappuccino. At any rate, it's just amazing how this stuff is catching on, and its fame seems to be spreading. <laughs> If you think Rodney Dangerfield gets no respect, what about them Chargers? Just try to find a Charger fan here in Knoxville. Are you at all a Charger fan? Um, no. <laughs> it's so funny when he says that you're a Charger fan. <laughs> Sales at local sports stores back it up. There's a shirt that predicts a Charger victory. They still have a rack full of them. On the cap rack, the 49ers are sold out. There's a full supply of Charger caps. But wait a minute, check this out. He's Scott Edwards, a dyed-in-the-wool San Diego fan. Do you feel like a lonely man? Oh, very, very. There are very few people who root for the Chargers. Um, every now and then they walk through the department and we have long, long talks. There's a guy in the sports shop says San Diego's going to win. Well, I think that'd be a neat trick. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Can you make the Chargers win the Super Bowl? Uh, Fred, that wouldn't be a trick. That would be a major miracle. Yeah, <laughs> probably right. <laughs> Guy says it'll be a miracle if, if the Chargers win. That's your department. What do you think? Well, I think that's certainly possible, but I think they probably means he uh, must uh, pray an awful lot to St. Jude because St. Jude is the uh, patron of uh, lost causes and hopeless causes. <laughs> That's our Schwal's World in Review. It's been an interesting year, and fortunately for us, at times funny. Before we go, I'd like to pass out some thank yous. First, to the Channel 10 photography staff. They are the best around, and their creativity and senses of humor have made doing these segments a lot of fun. And to the people who have been featured in Schwal's World, they've been good sports, they're real people, unpretentious, and that kind of uh, makes living in East Tennessee a pleasure. Thank you, and Merry Christmas.